Jesus Christ, dummy. You're confessing to a shootout in a church. And I ain't even through the hard stuff yet. You know I could take you in right now, put your buying bars, and tell you all in gray. Maybe. If you think you can make any of it stick. But then you'd never know about Morello. Hey, fellas. Sorry to keep you waiting. My shift just started. What you having? Two lunch specials, please. And more coffee. You know what? Let's bring the whole pot. All right, we've come this far together. What kind of heat did you get from the church? It's a strange thing. Nothing really came of it all. Always figured Celieri paid off someone somewhere because it wasn't even in the papers. We just had to lay low for seven, eight months. The cops kept showing up at the bar just to remind us they were watching. And Frank caught wind that Morello was helping Galati get reelected, hoping he'd go after the Don. We recovered some account books from Morello's offices. 33 was a pretty good year for him. Bastard knew we were bleeding out before we did. While we were busy keeping our heads down, he started moving in on our rackets. Quiet at first, a few trucks go missing. Uh, top burner has one too many highballs, drives off a bridge. One of our regular pickups suddenly closes up shop, moves upstate. You need it and catch on. Not me. I think maybe Polly smelled something. But even with the cops looking over our shoulders and Morello circling, we were still making good money. And with the Dom worried about keeping the heat off, we didn't have much to do except drink, have a few laughs. Every time I went into Celieri's, there was Sarah. So it was a good year. Until Frank. A Coletti, a Don's consigliere. Yeah, that's right. He set me straight. He set us all straight. There's a lot of buzz around town about you guys. Yeah, we got into a little scrap last night. It's no big deal. I don't care about the bar fight, Tom. I care how it looks when you walk into a club and buy everyone around. Uh, we gotta do something with that, though. Then blow it at the track on Sunday. Or take a dame to a show. Or invest it, for Christ's sake. <laughs> you want me to become one of those Wall Street boys? <laughs> don't sass me, Tommy. I'm trying to teach you the ropes so you don't get strangled by them. You ever have a dog, Tom? Sure. A little mutt when I was a kid. When I was eight or nine, before I came over from the Sicily, I had this beautiful, skinny Tirneco de Letna. Like a little greyhound. Fastest dog you've ever seen. That's how I met the Don. We started setting up races together, betting on her with coins and rifle shells. There wasn't another dog that could catch her. She never lost. Until the day she did. We were only out of pocket knife, but... I never saw the Don so angry. She got old on you? No. Pregnant. She went into heat, got out of the yard. And every dog in town had a turn. You're like that dog, Tommy. Every time you flash your money around, you're a bitch in heat. And everyone in that club is now looking to fuck you. And once you get fucked, you're no good to us. Do you understand? Uh, you made your point. Good. Because you need to think about your career here. Look, Paulie's at his ceiling. He's the guy we want in a tussle, but he's not smart enough to run anything. Sam is loyal, but he has no vision. But you, Tommy, you could run this town someday. Well, I appreciate that, Frank. So, uh, what happened to the dog? The Don tried to drown her. I broke his nose. You can let me off here. Give Sarah my best, Tommy.
Back then, everything went through Frank. The plans, the orders, the money. You could get the call day or night. Ah, Tommy. Frank says to wait for him in the garage out in the back, eh? You got the job, I think. Thanks, Luigi. Sarah's cooking. She's bringing something over. In this rain? <laughs> She's a good girl. I'll see you tomorrow, Luigi. Sure. Back in the day, when the boss was still with that phone, he got called out to a hit. Some uh, politician on the take. And his storm was just raging. Thanks for waiting, Tom. The Don and I had to go over last month's numbers again. Sure. So what's the job? I want you to help Sam and Polly with the shipment we've got coming in tonight. The good stuff? Straight from Canada. Where do you need me? Sam's gone to meet our friends from the north at a farm outside of town. Polly will oversee the trucks bringing the shipment into the city, but I want you to go with him. Be an extra pair of eyes. Make sure it all goes smoothly. Okay. Get the car from Ralphie and meet Paulie at the warehouse. He's got heaters in case you run into any trouble. Sure, Frank. No problem. Good. Now bring the Canadian home safe, Tommy. There is already a case earmarked for the Don. This mama motor is yours if you want it, Tommy. Thanks, Ralph. Working late, Ralphie? I says his sleep when F -F Frank sleeps. Man, he's been w working us hard. Morello's taking bites out of business everywhere else, Ralph. Booze racket's where we shine. We gotta stay ahead someplace. Ah, well, I, I just f -f -f fixed the cars that time. I, I changed the p -p plates again. You can't be too careful. See you in the morning. Okay. Heaven Radio now brings you a special weather report. The heavens have opened, folks, and we're experiencing some adverse effects across the municipal area. A large storm front, not expected to arrive for several days, hit Lost Heaven late this afternoon, releasing a deluge of rainfall on the city. If you've been out in the last couple of hours, you don't need me to tell you. There are reports coming in of a number of traffic accidents attributed to the downpour, with fender benders occurring in Oakwood and Chinatown. A more serious accident has occurred near the White Harbor Hotel, which is causing traffic to back up on the East Marshall Bridge all the way into downtown. The police department is attending incidents as they can, but they've now issued advice that people should not venture out on the roads unless their journey is strictly necessary. The roads are treacherous, ladies and gentlemen, so however a good driver you may be, it's just not worth the risk to you or anyone else. It would seem the best thing to do on a night like this is to stay at home with your loved ones and keep warm and dry. I don't know. In addition to the problems we've been hearing of on the roads, 
Air traffic in and out of the city has been suspended by order of the Aviation Authority. All scheduled flights departing Lost Heaven International have been grounded, and those scheduled to arrive into that airport have been canceled or diverted elsewhere. Now, as bad as that may sound, the latest report from the Weather Service that I've just been handed states that although the rain is heavy at this moment, and that all warnings should be heeded, the storm isn't expected to last all that long. Certainly, it doesn't seem like it will be anything like the big one of 1927. High winds are pushing the storm over us at quite a rate. We will, of course, keep you informed with news on the hour. But before I return you to our musical programming, let me reiterate that the Lost Heaven Police Department strongly advises against motor travel at this time. And on a... Come on, Tom! Hey, hey! Watch it, pal! Just dry it out! Sorry. You know this place? Oh, uh, yeah. We've done a few pickups at the farm before. Don't worry. There ain't nothing but cow shit and shine out here. It's gonna be an easy few clams. Boys will load up the trucks, and we'll come straight back. Yeah, let's make it quick. I got some place to be. Ah, uh, you see it sooner or later. Luigi's little girl, your night shift. <laughs> You're something else, pal. Protecting the girl's virginity one day and taking it the next. Lay off, Polly. Ah, uh, come on. I'm just kidding. She's a good girl. You settle down, she'll straighten you right out. going home to a couch. <laughs> now, I wonder what kind of stories she could tell about her old man, though. I he was a stone-cold killer back in the day. I wouldn't know. You know she's been helping out behind the bar since she was a kid. I bet she's seen and heard a few things. Probably knows more about our business than we do. She knows enough not to ask me too many questions. That's good. She won't ever make a liar out of you. Christ. You ought to marry her just for that. God damn it. Sam should be waiting here, but I don't see him. Something smells off. Don't let your Pekka get all shriveled up. Probably just trying to get out of the rain. Or into the bootleg. <laughs> That'll wake him. He ain't coming. Okay. Let's go find him. That bastard is just three sheets 
and I'm wrecking a new suit for nothing. I swear I'm gonna kill him. Here, just in case Frank was right. I'm gonna go grab them boys, get them sorted out. You go ahead, see what's what. We'll catch up with you. Weapon. You first. We don't have time for this. Sorry, pal. Guess we're doing this the hard way. Okay, then. Get over here! I got him pinned down! Moving to cover! Oh, 
bastard must have taken longer to die. Polly, what took you so long? Looking for Sammy. Did you find him? Nah, not yet. Just him. Canadian crew. Dollars to donuts to rest the face down in the dirt, too. Oh, Christ. Cops, Tommy. Well, how would I know? They didn't show a badge. God, they didn't say anything. They must be in Morello's pocket. This bastard. He can't even let us have this one racket. Forget about it, Tom. We gotta find Sam and get out of here. These guys are the real deal. They gotta be cops from the Border Patrol. Fuck. They've come here to be a break. They lost heaven to be with my pussy cats. Slip him the bump. Get it?
Come on, fellas! Push through! Tommy, look at yeah. him! Stay here and watch our backs. Plug anyone who gets within a hundred yards. Except us. Okay, okay, just hang on. I'll go get the truck, then we'll take you to the doctor. Hey, hey, you're gonna make it, Sam. Tommy, <laughs> stay here with him. I'll be back, I'll be back in a flash. Okay. We survived worse. Sure. Sure we have. Truck! Crap! 
We got cops! And Donnie too? Yeah. What a fucking massacre. How's Sam? Well, he ain't any worse. I'll go get him. Keep an eye out.
What are you doing here so late? Uh, uh, evening, Doc. Sorry to wake you, but um, we had a little accident. We got an injured man out here. All right, bring him inside. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, I'll stay with Sam. You can take the truck back. Call it a night. No, I'll wait. Uh, 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 the Doc's already got his hands full. No sense of both of us breathing down his neck. Go on, Doc. I'm gonna be fine. Okay. Hey. You did good tonight. series looking back over the president's plans and results since his inauguration. While we are making this great common effort, there should be no discord and no dispute. This is no time to cavil or to question the standards set by this universal agreement. It is time for patience and understanding and cooperation. Workers of this country have rights under this law, which cannot be taken from them, and nobody will be permitted to whittle them away. But, on the other hand, no aggression is now necessary to attain those rights. The whole country will be united to get them for it. The principle that applies to the employers applies to the workers as well. And I ask you workers to cooperate in the same spirit. When Andrew Jackson, old Hickory, died, someone asked, will he go to heaven? The answer was, he will if he wants to. If I am asked whether the American people will pull themselves out of this depression, I answer, they will if they want to. The essence of the plan is a universal limitation of hours of work per week for any individual by common consent and a universal payment of wages above the minimum, also by common consent. My friends, I cannot guarantee the success of this nationwide plan, but the people of this country can guarantee its success. I have no faith in cure-alls, but I believe that we can greatly influence economic forces. I have no sympathy with the professional economists who insist that things must run their course and that human agencies can have no influence on economic ills. One reason is that I happen to know that professional economists for 10 years, for a very long time. But I do have faith, and
and sustain faith in the strength of common purpose and in the strength of unified action taken by the American people. The president there speaking earlier this year on the National Recovery Administration. It's just about that time, ain't it, folks? Time to light up a big break red and let the troubles of the... You're late. Dinner's cold. <laughs> 